Hi everyone, just wanted to take a moment to um, fix my mistake and talk a little bit about um, horizontal and vertical stretching and compressing um, because I had made a bit of a mistake when I was talking about it in class and I just want to make sure that everything is all set and good to go. So ultimately what we are dealing with now in terms of linear functions is these uh, transformations have to do strictly with multiplying either the entire function or just the input by a value, and we're just going to call it A, all right? So for our purposes right now, as you can tell, I have my two lines. Um, my original line is f of x is equal to x plus 1, and now I am going to look at what happens when I multiply everything by A. So when I do this, that's the equivalent of me saying, um, let's call this g, if I call this g of x, that's the same thing as having a times x plus 1. So I'm multiplying everything by a. So my uh, y-intercept is going to change, right? Because traditionally when we're looking at lines, our y-intercept is what we're adding here. So our y-intercept will change um, because it is getting multiplied as well. So not only will our slope change, but so will our y-intercept. So as you can see, if I make it bigger, I have that green line that's forming. Um, and the y, the y value here, has gone up. Now it's, well, it was 1, so now it's 1.8. Um, and as I keep making a bigger, what's happening? Well, the line's getting steeper, right? Because the slope is increasing. Whenever your slope is going to be increasing, you are going to get a, um, a steeper line. And additionally, my y is changing, right? It's going up. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, however, you'll notice your x value here, your x-intercept, has not changed, right? It has not changed. So that's why when we're looking at multiplying your function by a, and I mean everything by a, that is called a vertical um, it's either going to be a sh uh, stretch or a compression. And whether or not you're dealing with a stretch or a compression deals with the value of k. So there's kind of two different situations you can encounter. So right, so here on this one, see how it gets really steep? Um, and the, the y-intercept kind of moves further up, right? Similarly, on the other end, if it was negative, again, it's getting really steep, just in the opposite direction. And again, the y-intercept moving far away. Um, or you could have this situation where it's between negative 1 and 1. And you can kind of see it even better when it's close to 0, right? It's, it's getting a lot flatter. It's not very steep. So if we started at 1 and kind of worked our way down, see, it's getting closer and closer to being a horizontal line. So um, What's the other piece of information that you can see here? Your intercept, your y-intercept, now it's down here. It's below the original intercept. But the other piece of information for you to consider is look how close they are, right? The y-intercept and the x-intercept are a lot closer together now, as opposed to when it was greater than 1. When it was greater than 1, they were, you know, when there was only a little above 1, it was a little farther apart. But like up here at 10, it's a uh, 5, it's a lot further. And then at 10, it's even further apart. So that's how we're going to kind of make our basis of determining where, when we have a vertical stretch or a vertical compression. So think of it this way. So you have a stretch, a vertical stretch, or a stretch in general, when the intercepts are getting further away, right? So here... I have a vertical stretch when the intercepts are moving further away. And when are the intercepts moving further away? Well, when one of two things is happening. When, well, when we have the absolute value is greater than one. So when you have a number um, of one or greater or negative one or less, the intercepts are further apart, right? So this is going to be our vertical stretch. Okay, so our vertical stretch, that's again when the intercepts are getting further apart from each other. So um, that would mean our alternative, the vertical compression, 
That is going to be the opposite. That's when it's less than one, right? And when it's less than one, you can see that our intercepts, they're a lot closer, right? They're kind of pushed next to each other. So that's how you can kind of remember this and think about this, that it's a compression when the intercepts are closer together and it's a stretch when they're further apart. And the vertical component comes from the fact that it's the y-intercept that's changing, all right? So in a vertical stretch, the y-intercept is moving further away from the x-intercept. In a vertical compression, it's moving closer to the x-intercept, all right? So now let's look at our other scenario, okay? So I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna clear that, turn off the green line here and turn on the blue. So the blue line, we have something different happening. In the blue line, it's f of in parentheses ax. So this is the equivalent of ax plus one. So as you can tell, based on this one, I'm not doing anything to the one here. My y-intercept is not changing now. Only x is being affected. So when I start moving around A, you can see my Y-intercept doesn't change, but my X-intercept does, right? So that's the part that's changing, the X-intercept, okay? So that's why when A is on the inside, we refer to this as horizontal, and again, we're going to have a compression or a stretch. So using that information that we just talked about in terms of uh, the intercepts moving further apart in a stretch, so a horizontal stretch, let's look at where the intercepts are moving further apart. So in a stretch, if I move it up, well, here's my x-intercept, right? Here's my y-intercept. They're actually closer together now. So as I get bigger, they're getting closer together. So I actually get a compression, oops. I actually get a compression when my A is bigger than one or less than one, or negative one, right? So I'm getting a compression in this case, right? Because my intercepts are getting closer together. Now, if I'm moving the other direction, right? I go below go below one, right? What's happening? My intercept, look, it's getting further and further away. So here's my y-intercept. It's not changing, but my x-intercept, it's sliding to the left, right? It's going further away. So I am getting a stretch now when a is between zero and one or the, the negative equivalent to that, all right? So I am now getting a stretch in the other situation, right? So before, when I was dealing with vertical, I had the compression when it was less than one um, and the stretch when it was greater than one, but now on horizontal, it's switched. And again, how can you think about this? If you were to look at it on a graph, you would see that the intercepts in a compression are moving closer together. And in a stretch, the intercepts are moving further apart, all right? So let's see how these compare. So if I were to turn this both on, right? Here we go. Let's go back to our one, our starting point of one. All right, so now if they're at one, they should all be the same line. So as A gets bigger than one, we notice that our green line, our X value has not changed and our y value has changed. And then our blue line, our y value has not changed, but our blue value has, I mean, our x value has. And you'll notice that when I made it bigger than one, the vertical version, right? The green one, the vertical one, which was changing the y-intercept, 
y-intercept moved further away from the x-intercept, so it's stretched. However, in the blue line, the horizontal change, the intercepts moved closer together, right? They moved closer together. It's a smaller distance. So the blue line has been compressed in terms of the intercepts, if you think about it, and the green line has been stretched when it's greater than one. But if I look at the other way, right now the blue line has been stretched because right now we're further away and the green line has moved closer together in terms of the intercept. So now the green line has been compressed. The vertical one has now been compressed when it's less than one and the blue line has been stressed when it's less, stretched when it's less than one, okay? So I'm going to send out a chart with these videos and all that information and hopefully that will help. Have a great day.